Welcome to the sixth video on stoichiometry and this is for advanced chemistry at Allen High School specifically the AP IBHL1 combo course. So the level that we're discussing is at a college level in terms of the mathematics and the concepts of this especially this next one so let's take a look at our next question here when we're working on this one we're looking at what's called a standardization you'll have an opportunity to do this when we get into the acid base unit you will standardize your sodium hydroxide we're going to use a little bit different chemistry today we're using HCl plus sodium carbonate and when we standardize it we determine a molarity using a substance which is much easier to work with in terms of getting a more accurate value and that's especially because it's a dry salt that can be used in grams use the balance to three decimal places which is very accurate now in this case the kiddos used graduated cylinders instead of pipettes and you're suspecting they might not have actually achieved this goal of 0.1 molar HCl so let's check out their work and see how they did I have HCl plus sodium carbonate I have an acid and a salt an acid and a salt is a double replacement so I'll get H2CO3 plus NaCl and of course we need to balance that so I need a 2 here and a 2 here now this is a little bit of an aside but if this truly were a reaction prediction for AP chemistry you would be expected to decompose that carbonic acid to H2O plus CO2 we don't have to in this context but I wanted to give you that little brief reminder now in the problem we are told that we had 0.129 grams of sodium carbonate and the question is what is the molarity of the HCl to get molarity we need moles of HCl per liters of solution now if we go on in the question we see that we had 25 milliliters of solution and I'm going to go ahead and convert that right away to liters so we have 0 0.025 liters so if we can get to moles we can capture a molarity so let's start with what we always have to do get to that mole road once you're at the mole road you can di drive down the mole road now here's where we're going to have that little variation on this theme we'll get mass to moles using molar mass moles to moles using the mole ratio but this time we're going to have to hop out of a dimensional analysis and go into the formula for this let's start first with our dimensional analysis this is going to be just a two-step process not too tough given what you've accomplished so far and we'd have start with our given 0 0.0129 grams of our sodium carbonate it's a good idea to keep these labeled we want to get to the mole road mass to moles we're going to use molar mass so we want to eliminate grams and go to moles of sodium carbonate and when we do that we would see two sodiums one carbon three oxygens should add up to 105.99 grams for a molar mass now we are here if you were at like a mall map they would put a little x there and say you are here well we want to keep going on our trip or excuse me we're actually right here my bad we're right here we want to get to that in this next step we want to go moles of sodium carbonate get rid of moles of sodium carbonate go to moles of HCl it is a 2 to 1 ratio because there's a 2 in front of the HCl and implied 1 in front of the sodium carbonate now if we complete that math we would find that we have 2.43 times 10 to the minus 3 moles of our HCl now we have enough we've done step one we have the moles of HCl step two we can calculate molarity our moles 2.43 
times 10 to the minus 3 over our given liters, which was 0 0.25 molar, or excuse me, liters, and that's going to give me 0 0.0974 molar. So it looks to me that our AP students were a little bit off of that 0.1 molar HCl. But you know what? That, that doesn't mean we can't use it. What's more important in most of these contexts is that you know exactly what you have, not that what you have made is exactly a 0.1 molar solution. Now, that's not true in all cases, but in most laboratory situations, that's what's most important. Now, we're going to go on and do some percent problems. You've already been introduced to percent yield. And remember with percent yield, it was our theoretical or maximum value that was our link in and out of a stoichiometry. Now, we're going to be looking at solutions if we know the percent composition of a solution. It's the mass of the solute over the total mass. Well, stoichiometries deal only with pure and theoretical values. So that mass of our solute will be our link in and out of our stoichiometry. Percent purity is very simple, similar. We'd have our mass of our pure on top, the mass of the entire impure sample on the bottom in the denominator times 100, part over a whole. And again, only pure or theoretical substances can go in and out of a stoichiometry calculation. So the calculations are similar. It's your link in and out of the stoichiometry that you want to pay close attention to. So let's give one of these a try. You've got the reaction here. Silicon tetrafluoride can form in some of the reactions in the semiconductor industry. There's your reaction. Now notice that we collected our SIF4 over water. And we have its temperature and its pressure. Now, we're given a mass of SiO2, but later on it asks us what was the percent purity of that SiO2. And that gives us the key information that that is the total of an impure sample. You have to read very, very carefully. Otherwise, you'll be tempted to put that 13 grams into a stoichiometry, and we can't do that. Now, we did over water calculations in the last unit when you did that ideal gas law inquiry, so this will be a good review of that. So we have a pressure, but since it was collected over water, I like to call that P wet, and it's 100.45. Now, to find the gas pressure, Remember, Dalton's law says that the total, which is the 100, is going to equal the gas plus the water. So to get just my gas, I am going to need to subtract the vapor pressure of water at that temperature. And that would be given to you. So I really should have included that in this question. That is not something you have to know it would be given to you in the context of the question. So now I have my pressure of my gas. Temperature of the gas, remember we want to work in Kelvin. So immediately, without thinking, without processing too far into the problem such that you'll forget, we want to get those degrees Celsius into Kelvin. So we have 288.95 Kelvin in this case. Now, that is almost all the information. They also gave us our milliliters here, the milliliters that we collected, and we need volume in liters because I hope by now you're seeing that we're going to be using the ideal gas law in this case. Now, I'm going to go ahead and convert that to 4.383 liters. Be very, very careful when you're converting by hand like that. You may want to set up that dimensional analysis for your conversion. Now, I've got enough information at this point where I could calculate my moles of SIF4. And we are assuming that SIF4 does not react with water, so this might not be a practical experiment that we could do in the lab, but you could certainly give it a shot and see if it's going to work for you. Now, it asks me here 
uh, what is the percent purity? So to find my percent purity, and I think it's helpful to write that down, I would need my grams of my pure over my grams of my impure sample. Whenever you're doing a percent problem, I recommend getting that formula in right away. The question asked me, what is the percent purity? It gives me now, if you've read carefully, you know that this is the mass of the impure. And we know that pure SiO2 can be obtained out of a stoichiometry. Pure and theoretical numbers can move in and out of stoichiometry calculations. So now, if I go moles to moles down the mole road, I can go moles to mass, and then ultimately put that into my percent formula there. So let's go ahead and start. This is going to be a two-step issue because we have PVNERT here. So let's start with our first step. Moles will equal pressure times volume over R times T. So my moles of SIF4, I'm going to use now that dry gas already adjusted for, that's a five, sorry about that, already adjusted for the vapor pressure of the water there. So I have 98.65 kilopascals, 4.383 liters. Now you have to use the correct R value that matches kilopascals, or you have to convert to one that you know. I like to simply memorize all three. And our temperature, again, you must use Kelvin. Unless it's a change in temperature, convert it to Kelvin all the time. And if you plug in there, and I'm not worried about sig figs yet because I'm not at the end of my problem, so I'm going to go ahead and carry this out a little bit. I have this many moles of SIF4. Now I can move into the dimensional analysis because I would be right here. Let me show you right here in my calculation. And I need to get to moles, so I can do that via a dimensional analysis. So let's set up our little dimensional analysis grid. And I've got two steps. So this is part two of our calculation here. And I'm going to put in my moles, 0.17998 moles of SIF4. I want to get rid of moles of SIF4 and go to moles of SiO2. And fortunately, it's a one-to-one. -one. I want you to show that because if you do a math mistake somewhere, I'll be looking for that mole ratio as a possibility for partial credit. Now, I'm right here in my math. I have to do one more step in part two. I want to get rid of moles of SiO2. I want to go to grams. Now, it's going to be of pure SiO2 mass to moles, use molar mass, and silicon plus two oxygens gives 60.08 grams. Now, if I plug that in, my answer for part two would be 10.81 grams of pure silicon dioxide. So now I can move back to this formula that I had originally and note that my percent purity is going to equal 10.81 over 13 times 100. So my percent purity, if you perform that calculation, is 83.18%. Okay, so that was a three-step problem. We have step one, we have step two, and then moving into the percent formula would be step three. Now, join me as we go on to more reaction stoichiometry in our next video.